A force, a fury. The nation's number one ranked team. They are the Hurricanes of Miami, and from any point on the field, at any time, they can strike like lightning. In game one, the charge was led by running back Melvin Bratton. Three times he scored as Miami ripped South Carolina. In game two, the defense dominated. Six sacks, and Florida fell. Game three in the Rado Texas Tech was sparked by the special teams. Three games, three wins, and a ranking of number two. Game four brought top-ranked Oklahoma. Vinny Testaverde fired four TDs, and a new number one was crowned. The Sooners were thunderstruck. The Canes followed with victories five and six. Easy wins over Northern Illinois and West Virginia. And even when things went wrong, they turned out right. Two weeks ago, Testaverde's role reached the perfect seven as Miami stormed by Cincinnati. Yes, these are the Hurricanes of Miami, the nation's number one team. And at the eye of the Hurricanes, sits the nation's number one player. Today, he goes for victory number eight against Florida State. Will lightning strike again? Bobby Bowden brings high-scoring Florida State into the Orange Bowl. The Seminoles are on a roll, but can they knock off number one? We have made a lot of progress since the Nebraska and the Michigan ball game. Whether we have made enough to beat them or not, I don't know, but, but we might have. Against Miami, you can't be overconfident. The Seminoles will need their game of the year. We're live from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Attention snowbirds, this is the kind of scene that South Florida dearly loves to show you this time of year. It is gorgeous, and here inside the Orange Bowl, along with watching a little college football this afternoon, some folks are going to be doing some sunbathing here, too, because our temperature has soared past 80 degrees, and we have got number one against the Florida State Seminoles, the Miami Hurricanes, who have won seven in a row. And, you know, if you look at the Miami schedule, if they are going to stumble at all before they get to a bowl game, it would be this afternoon against the Seminoles. The stage is set. I don't know if the Seminoles are that good, but the Hurricanes are going to be pressed here this afternoon. Now, there's a lot of other things going on in college football. Let's go to New York, and here's Jim Nance. Jim? CBS Sports presents college football. Live from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, it's the Florida State Seminoles versus the Miami Hurricanes. Today's game is sponsored by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, the Equitable, your key to financial opportunity, and by Michelob Light, super premium taste and less filling beer. It's an intrastate war here from up north, from Tallahassee, Florida, the capital of this great state. The Seminoles of Bobby Bowden have come down here, and there is one thought on their mind today, upset number one. Bowden, who has done such a good job over there at Florida State, has put this team back together following some tragedy, but it will not be easy. Jimmy Johnson and the Hurricanes are on a roll. I think you can hear them in the background. 
these two schools go hard at each other. It's interesting that the road team has won the last five times that Florida State and Miami have played. The key job today for the Seminoles is to attempt to shut down Miami's splendid quarterback, Benny Testaverde. Now, my colleague, Eric Parsegan, was downstairs in one of the locker rooms at the blackboard, and he told us about the task at hand. Thank you, Brent. Miami has been an awesome passing team this year with 17 touchdown passes. And one of the formations we'll see this afternoon is this strong side flood pattern, which they like to use. If the team overloads, they'll move to this and throw to the weak side. If teams zone off, they'll send out all five receivers. So what it means for the Seminoles is they've got to mix up their defenses this afternoon. Number one, here's one of the ones that they'll be using this afternoon, a zone, a three deep zone, four backers, four man rush, the field in the deep is divided into thirds, one quarter each for the linebackers with a four-man rush. They can't stay in this all day. They'll get cut up. Now, you've heard us talk about double zone, and this is the two-deep zone with five backers and a four-rush. This is vulnerable to the deep pass, but it shores up all the short passing game with a four-man rush. We'll see some of that. Now, if you want to blitz, you have to lock on to the receivers here, man for man. Blitz the strong safety from any position here, but you've got to get to that quarterback, otherwise they're going to bomb you. Another one that we may see is what they call the two deep five under man with a four man rush. Again, two deep zone, five man to man coverage underneath, good for short passing. But I think, as Bobby Bowden said, they're going to have to outscore the Miami Hurricanes if they expect to win. The captains out at midfield, they'll flip the coin. There is a breeze blowing in the Orange Bowl, it'll be a factor. We're going to be back with the opening kickoff in a moment. Back at the Orange Bowl, ready for the Hurricanes against Florida State. John Dockery is with us. He was down at the locker rooms for the pregame talk. Let's go down to John. Thank you, Brent. I was in the locker room, as you said, and the Seminoles are like guided missiles looking for a target. Bobby Bowden told them three things, basically. He said, don't be out hit. If you don't want to be, you won't be. He said, don't lose your poise if something goes wrong early. Perhaps most importantly, he reminded the team that Pablo Lopez's mother was here in the stands. Of course, Pablo Lopez, their teammate who died six weeks ago in that tragic accident. So the Seminoles, quietly intense, they're ready for their battle with the Hurricanes. Get just about ready to go now back up to you Brent all right John and there we see Mark Seelig number three to kick it off for the number one ranked team in the country with Keith Ross and Derek Carter deep into the corner of the end zone and on out era that's exactly the spot where the Hurricanes buried Oklahoma a few weeks ago looks like there was a flag down this is the offense Florida State will come in with. Herb Gaynor is the split in. He is the big play man. Darren Holloman is the flanker. Watch him for an end around this afternoon. Pat Carter, the tight end, is number 85. Bobby Bowden likes him a lot, and he'll use him this afternoon. Sammy Smith's the tailback. He's number 33. He is alongside number 30, Tanner Holloman. And the young man who will quarterback the Seminoles today. Danny McManus, number 14. He has guided this team to three straight wins. He'll throw on first down, complete the quarter, the tight end. Well executed bootleg pass in a sense. He faked to the field that time, Brent. Brought his tight end across from the left side, and he was wide open. Watch the tight end on your left. He fakes a sweep to the left. Now look at the tight end, Carter, number 85. Wide open in the seam, right there. And 36, one of the big hitters in that secondary, which is Bain, makes a great, I mean, <laughs> Blades makes a great play. That's a 20-yard game. First and 10. Rolling to the left, McManus dropping again for his tight end, Carter, and he has another eight yards before middle linebacker George Myra drops off and brings Carter down. Let's take a look at this offensive line, and their job today is a big one. Ayanata is on the left side. Next to him at guard is Kuypers, number 62. The center, Jimmy Hindley, he'll have his hands full. Mark Salva on the right side. 
Tomberlin, over 300 pounds this afternoon. Second and two, and they've thrown wide open to Sammy Smith. First down to the 31. There is a penalty flag down. However, hold on. It's a 20-yard gain, and there is a penalty marker down with Smith stretched out near the 30-yard line. He is hurt. So the game stands. McManus does a beautiful job faking the trap right there to Holloman and delivering to Sammy Smith coming right out of the backfield. Well executed play. That could hurt them, Brent, because Floyd is already out. They're running back and Smith just went down. So far, McManus has put it up on every play. This one to the running back releasing. And they will go, Era, to a sophomore, Keith Ross, number 20. He will be a tailback. Sammy Smith is still down on the ground. He is their ballyhooed freshman tailback. Now he is up and being assisted toward the sideline. Era, how about this hurricane defense? Well, it's been a remarkable defense. They've had 26 sacks. The front four, Bill Hawkins at the right defensive end. And at, le at the right tackle, Jerome Brown of 4840 at 285 pounds. Dan Cilio steps in for injured Derwin Jones and a big guy. And Dan Stubbs, a sack man. He's already had 12. But they have lost Sammy Smith. And Ross, number 20, is in the backfield along with Holloman. Florida State has not run yet. And they come with Ross. No game. The heart of that hurricane defense there to stand him up. And again, George Myra Jr., number 45, makes the stop. Strong side linebacker Winston Moss. He'll be over the tight end all day. George Myra, great competitor, the middle linebacker. And Rod Connor Carter, the weak backer. And this is a great secondary they have. They have a couple of injuries. Bubba McDowell will start at the left corner. Kevin McCutcheon at the strong safety. Benny Blades, a great one at the free safety. And Tolbert Bain rounds out that secondary. They have five in there now on this second and eight. McManus takes a deep drop. Incomplete. And the ball should have been caught. That was Darren Holloman who didn't hold on out here. The right side of the offense. McManus took an extra deep drop. Had time. The offensive line gave him enough time. Blitz on right here. He curls right there. But look at the blitz in the inside. They beat it. But unfortunately, he doesn't hang on to the ball. Man-to-man -man coverage underneath. You see, he, Holloman, Darren turns right there, but does not hold on to the ball. Era Bubba McDowell was playing him very soft. He had backed off. Third and eight. And they run Ross. And Ross battles his way close to a first down. Beautiful call. Bobby Bowden said he wants to run the ball when on passing downs and pass the ball on running downs. There was a great example. They caught him in what we call double zone man under. You'll see everybody's running the coverage. Carter makes a great block right there on Myra number 45. And of course, Lewis, I mean, <laughs> Keith Ross picks up the first down. The ball is at the 20-yard line after a 10-yard run. Now they split the backs. This is the first time they've shown a set other than the eye. They keep him back the block. McManus almost intercepted down there on the two-yard line. Benny Blades had the ball in and out of his hands, and he should have held on. Well, McManus thus far has certainly impressed me, Brent. Uh, he has rejuvenated this Seminole team. You see Jimmy Johnson right there concerned, obviously, because of the way these Seminoles are moving that football. This ball was just overthrown right there. Blades had it right in his hands, but could not hang on. This is another passing situation, and already McManus is 3 of 5, 48 yards. Split backs again. And instead they run on that sprint draw, and Holloman, the fullback, gets to the 5 with Benny Blades, 36 in hot pursuit. That was a tremendous call, Era. A great the call. defense and like me, we thought they'd come up Troy. Perfect call on the play. Keith Ross has really impressed me. Number 20 stepping in there. He's the third spring running back. You see it from a end zone shot. Just hands the ball on a little trap play and watch him cut clear back across the green and avoid the track tacklers. I haven't seen anyone do this to the Miami defense in quite a while. They have put the canes on the run here. First and goal at the six. 
Here's straight ahead with the fullback, Holloman for the touchdown. concerned well executed drive both passing and running great calls Derek Schmidt will attempt the extra point the holder is McManus Schmidt's a good kicker and you'll need one here this afternoon he puts the seventh point up on the board they drive 80 yards and nine plays are from the end zone, watch him cut back and look at the daylight over the left side. Right there. You see 54 Hawkins is playing the quarterback. They didn't even have to block him. They finessed him. And Tanner Holloman scores before Benny Testaverde has touched the ball. But it's Testaverde's turn and we'll be back. Bobby Bowden with a seven-point lead. This morning he got up and said to his wife, Ann, Ann, I can't remember ever being a 14-point underdog at Florida State. And, dear, I'll tell you something. We are going to win this football game. That's a coach who knew something, Eric. <laughs> well, he's got to wait till Vinny Testaverde gets his hands on the ball. Schmidt with the kickoff, and it'll go to a short man, Darrell Oliver. Seminoles are fired now. They've got seven points to work with. And after this action, we will take you down to Houston. Season premiere of the NBA on CBS. The Los Angeles Lakers and the Houston Rockets. We'll tell you more about that game as the afternoon unfolds. Now it is first and ten for Tester. The report from the bench. We see that the Seminoles go 80 yards and nine plays, 243. Holloman with the touchdown. Testaverde up with first down. They'll come from the I formation. He'll throw on first down. Great time. Sideline complete. And he goes to a tight end with Greg Newell getting Charles Henry out of bounds on first down. These are great skilled people that Miami has. Brett Perriman starts at that split end spot. Great jumper. Michael Irvin, the big play man. Already has 17 touchdown passes, career touchdown passes. Charles Henry, who you saw catch the ball. Warren Williams at the left half. Alonzo Highsmith at fullback. And Vinny Testaverde, Mr. Everything. And Mr. Everything hands it off that time to Williams. And Williams gets the first down before Newell, the free safety, again makes the stop. So on two plays, the Hurricanes here are forcing the secondary to come up with the tackles. Gary Stevens, the offensive coordinator, said that they did want to establish a running game here, and they certainly do, as number 38 McGowan overplays at the linebacker, ran by it. They didn't have to block it. Irvin goes to a slot. Perriman is outside of him. Tysmith cuts back. Spins off a tackle, gets to the 49. And again, they're up. They're getting past the defensive line and the linebackers. That was an 11-yard gain by Highsmith. And also an excellent job of running by Alonzo Highsmith. The pros say he's the best in the nation at that spot. Now watch him shake some tacklers. He cuts back, keeps great balance. There's a good shot right there, but he avoids that one, spins off, bleeds 11 yards out of that play. First and ten. Incomplete. Irvin on the far side had it go through his hands and on out of bounds. Okay, the offensive line of the Hurricanes has been decimated by injury. Maurice Maddox will step in there for injured John O'Neill at the left tackle. Dave Alekna, very bright, intelligent at left guard. Rakosi, a fine center with great experience, quick feet for big guy. Paul O'Connor, the best pass blocker in that line. And Scott Proven stepping in for injured Davis and Patchett. Passing situation for the Heisman Trophy favorite. Hits Irvin that time. The same pattern on the far sideline. And Sanders, number two, was the defensive back who took him out of bounds. 
Well, this is the defense working right now for Bobby Bowden. This is a young defensive line, and you will recognize perhaps only one name. That's the nose guard. He's improving. There he is, Gerald Nichols. He was in on that seven-sack attack in Tallahassee last year. Didn't help. Felton Hayes, one of the backers. Fred Jones is a good one, and so too is Paul McGowan. But so far, they've been kept out of the tackles here. It is third and two. And Highsmith batters straight on for the first down, and Fred Jones, 55, brings him down. Here it looks like we could have a high-scoring, freewheeling affair. Sure, it looks like it. Watch Greg Ricosi right there in the center make a great block. Right here in the center spot right there. Greg Ricosi is the center. Watch him make a nice block here. Turns the nose man harp out of there, releases off of that, and blocks number 38, the great linebacker McGowan. The Hurricanes have moved to the Seminoles 36. Mr. Verde calling the play at the line of scrimmage. Deep drop. Complete. Found his tight end, and he's out of bounds inside the 15. Charles Henry pushed out by Newell. Good call by Testaverde at the line of scrimmage. That's a 21-yard gain. Testaverde to Henry. Great play here. You watch the tight end. Henry, he'll slow block in here and then break out into the seam. Perfect throw by Testaverde. He releases off right there, breaks to the outside. He's right in the seam, and Testaverde puts it right there. Beautiful throw, well-executed play. Williams and Highsmith continue to be the running backs. Straight ahead to the five-yard line. Newell and Williams, two defensive backs for Bobby Bowden, make the tackle. And the Canes are pouring through the front seven. Great job on the inside. Watch the blocking up front. They're handling Harp, number 58, the nose man. 55, Jones is blocked. That offensive line, even though it's been hurt by injury, is doing a marvelous job. This close to the goal, Jimmy Johnson employs two tight ends, and Urban comes in on a wing. Highsmith up over the top, close to the three-yard line, where it will be second and goal for the Canes. Bobby Bowden said he wanted to swap touchdowns and field goals with him. He wanted to score the touchdown and hold him to a field goal. He'll be hard-pressed to do that against this outfit. They're really a great offensive football team. So here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, along with Eric Parsegan, John Dockery, I'm Brent Musburger. Florida State scored first. Miami's opening possession. They have driven down inside the five. And the Seminoles must stop them there as Williams slip. And the free safety, Greg Newell, has been extremely active. Number 40. He's been in on a half a dozen tackles. You see that low on the back of that helmet. That is a tribute to Pablo Lopez, who was tragically shot to death over in Tallahassee some six weeks ago. This is a run-action pass situation, third down. They like to flood the right side. Not going to run it. For the flag, touchdown, Williams. set this play off right there walls him off and of course Warren Williams walks into the end zone well executed drive and play for the touchdown linebacker Paul McGowan number 38 tries to come outside to help out but the blockers are able to contain him and he can't get there in time as Williams steps in for the touchdown 
So the Hurricanes and the Seminoles are all even, and each coach is looking for some defense. Well, there we see Sammy Smith, the tailback for Florida State. He was injured on the first series. He caught a pass releasing from the backfield, sprained shoulder, and from that view, it does not appear that Smith will be returning here this afternoon. So Bobby Bowden is shorthanded. Victor Floyd, he was the starter at tailback. He comes in banged up. And the burden falls on Keith Ross, the sophomore from Newberry, Florida, number 20. He also is one of the deep men to return this kickoff. Here he is. He charges out to the 20-yard line. Here's our lineup of NFL games on CBS tomorrow. Dandy with the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. We'll be taking a look at that one on the NFL today. The Niners play New Orleans. Atlanta goes against New England. That is going to be a tough game. Philadelphia, St. Louis, Green Bay, Pittsburgh. Those are all early games. And then late, Minnesota plays Washington. The NFL today starts it all at 12.30 Eastern time on CBS. McManus brings the Seminoles to the line of scrimmage. Off a play fake. Wide open receiver, complete again for McManus, and another first down. Working against Tolbert Bain, who had dropped off on that zone. They come to the tight end for 17 yards. They can see everybody is going to be driven off here, and he comes wide open in the left flat. Tom O'Malley, number 92, will break out of the tight end spot, break into the flat right there. He's wide open. First and ten for the Seminoles. Ball is at the 36. And Ross comes out to the 41-yard line before George Myra, 45, wraps him up. Brent, I think we've got to keep in mind that uh, the Hurricanes had two a week off. They haven't had contact for two weeks. I shouldn't say contact, but haven't had a game condition. And, uh, might might have taken them a series of downs or two to get started. What did Coach Johnson tell you about contact at practice? They did have a lot of contact. On Tuesday and Wednesday, they hit pretty good, he said, without the full tackling in the secondary. But still, it's not like playing in the game, and sometimes you have to get those bugs ironed out. Let's see what happens on this drive by the Seminoles. Second and six for the Seminoles. McManus avoids pressure. Deep down the middle, it'll be incomplete, intended for Darren Holloman, and he was lucky to release the ball. He had pressure from the rear closing in, and that was big Danny Stubbs, number 96, one of the fiercest pass rushers that you and I have seen in college football this season. Now McManus coming back off the play fake. Here is Stubbs around the corner. Can't get back, and that big tackle, Pat Tomberlin, was able to run him off, and then he overthrew his man, and wisely, too, because there was double coverage. It's third down, and McManus with a deep drop, complete over the middle. Scott DeMurray, out of the Miami area, was the receiver. He just delayed along the line and waited for the clear out, and then just broke underneath it, and he was wide open. You'll see that Gaynor drives off. You see number one kind of hesitate. It'll be in the right side of your screen and then comes underneath all of the zoning linebackers right there and catches the pass. What we have seen so far, Florida State has picked up a couple of weaknesses in this hurricane defense. They are moving the ball better than any team that I have seen against this club in a couple of years. Under pressure, incomplete. Going to his tight end, Tom O'Malley, and again, it was Mr. Stubbs in that backfield. He puts a lot of pressure on you, but the one thing about McManus, as Bobby Bowden said, he is not easy to sack. He's got a quick arm. He's not very big, about 5'11 at the most, but he's awful tough to sack because he senses the people around him, got a quick release, and get, gets rid of it before the rushers can get to him. Stanford, Connecticut. 
he made a great play there in front. He read it well. He had a little counter play, but he was not fooled by it. Pursued, brought him down beautifully. Watch Cilio at the right side here. Comes right off of his block right there. Pursued right down on Ross. Nice job. George Myra batted the ball up in the air. McManus threw the ball low, and Myra was able to bat it away. And Florida State will punt. He had Gaynor open coming from the right side here. Looks like he's going to scramble and run. Now he sees Gaynor crossing away, and Myra jumps up and bats that ball down. It's, it's almost buried. intercepted. Punting the ball to David Kintai. Kintai spins away. It's out beyond the 15-yard line. A 39-yard punt by Berry and an 8-yard Kintai run. And era. now the pressure will be on Florida State's defense when we come back. We're tied in the Orange Bowl. Let's go down to the sideline, and here's John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brent. Yes, Sammy Smith uh, is along the sidelines. He's on the bench. His shoulder, right shoulder, is taped up. It's a sprained shoulder. It's not separated. They said they'd see how he'd respond to see whether he's going to play or not again. So he's not out definitely, but it does look like he's going to be out for at least a few series. Now back to you, Brent. Thank you, John. Vinny Testaverde brings the Hurricanes up to the line of scrimmage. Highsmith and Williams are the running backs. Perriman and Irvin, the wide receivers. Williams, who scored the touchdown, breaks free and gets past the 25-yard line before Terry Warren, the outside linebacker, stops him there. Here they are pushing the Seminoles back off the line of scrimmage. Well, their, their uh, play calling is excellent, Brent, because the Seminoles there expect a lot of passing from Testaverde. They don't expect this team to run. And uh, they're coming out and making it appear like a formation that's going to be a pass, and then they're running the football successfully. Second and two. And again, this time, Highsmith will not get through a hole. Felton Hayes, 46, and 38, Paul McGowan, are the two defensive players who come across and throw Miami for its first loss of the game. Here it is from ground level on the far side. Felton Hayes, number 46, comes in and makes a nice stop there, gets help, almost spins off of it. This will be third and two against Bobby Bowden's defense. Testaverde with that stand up, drops it to Henry over the middle for the first down. As easy as that. Big Benny Testaverde drops back, has great vision with that size of his, and catches the tight end coming off the line. Number two, eight, Charles Henry had arthroscopic surgery two weeks ago. Here he comes right across. There he is wide open. He just slow blocks and breaks across the middle. And Benny picks him up. They got a devastating passing attack. Gary Stevens has done a marvelous job with him. And for the first time in some time, Mel Bratton, number five, has checked in. Testaverde passes to Irvin on the far sideline, working against Sanders. Just a quick out pattern. There is Mel Bratton there. Well, he's some kind of player, 6'1", 217. I mean, he just launches himself when he gets the ball. He was injured against West Virginia and was sent to the sideline. And today, they are bringing him back for the Hurricanes, second and six. Highsmith and Bratton are in the eye. Here is Bratton. First time he has carried the ball out to the 38, and Paul McGowan, 38, brings him down. McGowan's a leading tackler on this football team with 80 involvements coming into this game. Also a candidate for the Butkus Award. He's had a great season, number 38 there, 6'1", 226, and a junior. And Brian Blades, he too has missed action because of an injury. Now he checks in for the first time. So the Hurricane offense 
back at full strength except that tackle. Pusher and Testaverde is sacked. Coming through was Eric Hayes, number 78, a left defensive tackle out of Tampa, Florida. 6'3 and 283 pounds and just a freshman. Very tough to get to Vinny Testaverde. Number 78 right there really puts the heat on, brings him down and forces a punt. And they love the block punts. McGee snaps it perfectly to Fegels who gets it off. And Sanders lets it go over his head. And the Hurricanes will let that ball roll dead at the 16-yard line. It will not be good field position for Danny McManus. So both teams show a little defense. A 56-yard punt by Fegels puts Florida State in the hole. We'll be right back. How did they get this sack on Testaverde? Here's Eric Hayes right now, and he runs his blocker, which is uh, Alekna, comes right around on a stunt, runs his blocker into the center. Watch this. Eric Hayes, a freshman, he had a little stunt in there, and he wipes right off and gets right into the secondary clean right there and makes the sack. And there was good coverage about six yards downfield. Testaverde did not have anybody to go to quickly. He saw Hayes come free, and Jimmy Johnson's Hurricanes are feeling pressure for one of the few times this season. Oklahoma certainly delivered some in their contest here. First and ten for McManus. This is Ross. Ross fumbles the ball. Miami recovers. Tolbert Bain recovered the fumble. George Myra Jr. knocked it free. And number 18 gives the Hurricanes field position. Just a pitch sweep right here. Ross has got the ball. Looks like pretty good blocking right there. There's the hit. The ball pops out. It's Carter, number 91, that caused the fumble. Nice job by Carter. Carter and Myra coming together at the ball. Testaverde has it inside the 25 at the 23-yard line. And so George Myra Jr. playing extremely well in the early going here against Florida State. Testaverde communicating with Bratton. He'll throw on first down. Plenty of time this time. Throws low inside the five-yard line. Incomplete intended for Irvin. Looks like Irvin is hurt. Looks like he hurt his hand. Left wrist. Boy, what an effort that was by Irvin. I thought he, he was a sensational attempt. Just a, a quick little turnaround by Vinny. Waits, waits. Now he throws it. He throws the ball low. Right there, oh, the ball definitely hits the ground. No question about that. But Irvin made a great attempt at it. Miami yanks Bratton out of the game along with Irvin. Bratton was not sure of the last play. Irvin injured. So Williams is back. And Brett Perriman is a wide receiver. Smith right into the heart of the defense. There was no hole there. Well, they put three receivers out to the side. It looked like they were going to blitz. I think Vinny wanted to give a quick trap in there and pop through there, but the Seminoles were up to it. Good job of defense. Gerald Nichols, the lone returning member of Bobby Bowden's defensive line, is credited with that tackle. This is third and ten era. And a big one for the Seminoles. Bobby Bowden did not want this to happen. He felt that if he could just keep error free, that he could do a job on the Hurricanes, but he can't make these kind of mistakes. He'd love to force him to a field goal here. Festiverde rolling to the left. Receivers are covered. Coming back the other way. Throws to the end zone. Cox. Nail 
scores the extra point. A 23-yard touchdown pass. Testimony to Highsmith, his 40th career TD pass here. A little concerned about Benny's ability to roll out to his left as he does there because of a foot injury, but he shows plenty of mobility here. He's looking downfield, looking, looking. Finally, he spots Alonzo Highsmith in the end zone. There's the throw right on the mark, right inside the goal line. Great play by Vinny Testaverde. 23-yard touchdown coming after a Florida State fumble. And that 40th career TD pass by Vinny ties the school record held here at Miami by Bernie Kosar. You know what kind of a T-shirt Vinny Testaverde wears at practice and underneath that game jersey? It says Downtown Athletic Club. <laughs> That's the club that gives the Heisman trophy. Highsmith could be another first-round draft choice from this team. He can block, he can run, and you just saw him catch passes. And the ball teed up for Seelig. Florida State will go back to work. Danny McManus, who has looked impressive here so far as a quarterback, must come from behind this time. Here is Ross. He fumbled on that sweep five yards deep. He's coming out. There's that famous lateral of Florida State oh, across field, and they've got an alley. He could go the distance. Dexter Carter is free. in the college fraternity he's got a hundred being a big game coach he can beat you on an afternoon like this he's taking his team on the road and beating all the big ones up he's got 160 wins nobody will go to Tallahassee and play <laughs> <laughs> he's been beating all the biggies on the road they don't want to see that Indian come out there on war paint and throw <laughs> that at the 50 and that crowd go crazy up there Smith's kick off J.C. Penny. He slipped short of the 20. And there's a big one to the Big Ten today. Ohio State and Iowa. Jim Nance, what's going on with that one? Well, Brent, as you know, it's not easy to play at Iowa City either. Now, the Hawkeyes here blitzing on Jim Carsados. His pass blocked by Tyrone Taylor. Caught in the air by Kerry Burt, who returns it for the touchdown. And Iowa is up early. Let's go back to Brent and Nera. I'm surprised that Hayden Fry's got enough healthy bodies. I keep reading the paper about that ambulance pulling up at Iowa. He strikes first. We'll keep you up to date on that one. Here it is, 14 all. And it has been wild and woolly so far. <laughs> J. 
Estaverde straight back. Plenty of time. Complete to Urban. Hammered at the 39-yard line by Deion Sanders. Boy, did he hum that ball in there. He has got some kind of arm. He had wonderful protection. Urban just came down the field, broke over the middle. Tolbert Payne drove off deep. Can't quite see it here. You see the tight end Henry breaking. Now watch this ball come right in between, beyond the linebackers. Sanders comes in and makes the play, but that ball got there quick. We're in the first quarter, and we've had four touchdowns scored here in the Orange Bowl. That's the Verde calling the play up at the line. And Highsmith moving Williams over, and there was confusion, and Testaverde uses one of the three hurricane timeouts here in the first half. Let's go down to the sideline while we've got an opportunity and check in with John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brenton. You just saw Michael Irvin catch that pass from, uh, from Vinny Testaverde. Before the last touchdown, remember, he hurt his hand. He came off the field. They were trying to put ice on it. Vinny threw the touchdown, and before they could get the ice on Irvin's hand, he ran out to greet Vinny, and then he kept the ice on the old injury for a little while. Nothing serious, and he's back in the game. They expect to play. No side effects. Now back to you. All right, John, so far, Goodyear blimp overhead here in the Orange Bowl. Taking a shot of our scene here this afternoon. That's the airship Enterprise from Pompano Beach, Florida. And down here on the Good Mother Earth, Benny Testaverde is 7 of 9 for 85 yards and one touchdown. Era, I guess from a defensive standpoint, they need to get more pressure on Testaverde, but because he sends so many people out as receivers, it's dangerous to blitz. I don't know how you can defensive. You just got to try to slow him down as the best you can do. They run Williams to the 45-yard line. And that was Steve Gabard, the defensive tackle, wrapping him up. Bobby Bowden would be very happy if he saw a lot of those running plays because this Miami team can score quickly. They've got tremendously skilled receivers. They've got a great concept and scheme in their passing attack. They take advantage of what you give them. Tough to even slow down. Second and four. There the rush breaks free. Testaverde sacked for the second time. And it was Shelton Thompson, a backup outside linebacker, number 93, from Lakeland, Florida. All the sacks for this Seminole team come from that spot between Warren and Thompson, which is their rush backer, outside backer. And he got in there and did the job. That position has had seven sacks, uh, Brent. That's an 18-yard loss leaving Testaverde and Miami with a third and 22. Brian Blades and Michael Irvin are to the left. Brett Perriman is to the right, and we've run out of time here in the first quarter. Four touchdowns posted in the first 15 minutes. 14 all. We'll be right back after this message and a word from your local stations. For Benny Testaverde, fortunate that they had last week off. He injured his foot in that game against Cincinnati. And it concerns the Hurricanes as to his mobility here this afternoon. Straight back drop, running out of pressure, and he is taken down for the third time here this afternoon. And that was the nose man, Thomas Hart. Number 58, bringing him in on Testaverde. So the pass rush doing the job. Watch Harp fight off the man and then make the stop on Testaverde right there. Good coverage that time, Brent. And he was down, shaken up. Now he is wearing a special guard on that injured right foot. And you can see him favoring it a touch as he comes to the sideline. So there is something to the fact that he is slowed up today. One high top and one low cut shoe and a special protective pad over the instep. Fiegels booms a punt to Sanders. Fields it at the 30. Looking for an alley. 
the kicking game gives the Seminoles field position inside the 40-yard line. Fullington brought him down, and Fullington might have saved a touchdown. That was a 44-yard punt with a 30-yard return by Sanders. Well, Bobby Bowden says Deion Sanders is the best athlete on the football team. He's got the speed. He could be a wide receiver or running back and certainly demonstrates that. On Look at him make the moves in here. Picks the daylight perfectly. Comes to the wall. Gets the corner turn. Watch him make this little move here. Try to fake out the defender. Look at this. At the ball like a loaf of bread. I thought he was going to pass it left hand. <laughs> First and 10. McManus using Victor Floyd for the first time. Now there's a story. Number 27 checks in for the first time this afternoon. He is the starting tailback for this team, but did not start this game because he was injured. Sammy Smith was knocked out of action early on with a shoulder injury. And the third string tailback, Keith Ross, tried to carry the load, and he fumbled to set up a Miami touchdown. Now it will be Floyd, and this is a second and nine for the Noles. Complete to the 35-yard line. McManus hits Floyd coming out of the backfield, and McCutcheon makes the stop. Let's go down to John Dockery for a report on Vinny. John? Thank you, Brent. You see Vinny behind me. They're looking at his right foot, the same one you were talking about, with the pad on top of the instep. Apparently, he just sprained it when he was tackled, but he's okay. He was just on the phone with the offensive coordinator. They say he'll be back. Gary Stevens, the offensive coordinator upstairs on the telephone. Split backs. McManus throws complete to the 30-yard line. Coming back to O'Malley, his tight end. Boy, this is a well-conceived offensive game plan by Bobby Bowden. There are, we haven't seen Oklahoma or anybody move the ball on the Canes like this. You see, O'Malley just comes right into the seam right there. McManus puts it right in his hands, but he's just short. To come up with fourth down and a foot. That is the backup quarterback, Jeff Toretta, throwing on the sideline just in case Jimmy Johnson needs it. This is fourth and inches. down to the 25-yard line. Williams, number 49, carries the ball for Florida State. He had come off the bench. That's Dane Williams out of Fruitland Park, Florida. He's 6'1", 225, and a sophomore. He's carried the ball 17 times for 89 yards, which is a 5'2 average. He's a strong runner, a power runner, and that's what he's put in there on that fourth and short. Floyd still at tailback. Williams stays in at fullback. McManus to throw. Holloman, it's incomplete. Great coverage by Bain, number 18, Tolbert Bain, coming over, and he ripped Darren Holloman down. Great job by Tolbert. Had a lot of coverage there. Watch him move to the ball as it's in the air. Right there, knocks that ball free before Holloman can get it. This is second and ten. McManus waiting for the play to come in from the sideline. Well, Brent, I've been impressed with McManus. He's got a quick release, he's got a good arm, and he's been very accurate. Well, Bowden says the kids respond well to his leadership. We've got a timeout. So far, McManus is 7 of 13 for 80 yards. We'll be right back. Well, Aero and I will be participating in a 16-year tradition later. We'll select a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each of these schools, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of both Miami and Florida State. Florida State and Miami are tied at 14. We have 11.56 to go in the first half. This is second and 10 for Florida State. They have the ball at the Miami 25-yard line. Deflected and caught by Floyd, and then he drops it, and it goes out of bounds. Greg Mark, number 94, got a hand on the ball. That was a dangerous throw. There were a lot of defenders in the area. Just a quick little, just takes two, two steps and a drop, and there's the throw. As he comes out, look, the ball is deflected. Very fortunately, he catches the ball. McManus is 
not very tall, and he could have a lot of balls knocked down. The one man they have to be concerned with is number 98, Jerome Brown. And Jason Kuypers knocked his helmet off that time. He took it to the big fellow a little bit, didn't he? The big fellow will be back. It's third and six, and Floyd runs to the 20-yard line. That will leave them about five yards short of the first down. Greg Mark wraps him up, and you would think that Schmidt would come onto the field, and he is. Florida State will attempt a field goal. Brent, that was a great play by Greg Mark because he came from the right end position. Otherwise, that was going to be a positive yardage play. But he closed down and shut it off. He's going to force his field goal. So coming up at the half, the Prudential College Football Report. We'll have all the scores and highlights with Jim Nance. Here is Schmidt. He'll be set to attempt a field goal. It would be 36 yards. Long enough. He's got it. He has put the Seminoles up by three, 17-14, with 11 minutes to go. Bobby Bowden continuing to do the job here against the number one ranked team in the country. We'll be right back. Schmidt to kick it off for the Seminoles. They lead it 17-14. J.C. Penny from the five. Oh. There's an alley. Oh, what a save. Great tackle. Touchdown saving tackle by number 28 of Florida State. Dedrick Dodge brought him down. Era, let's go back because Miami could have scored defensively here. Number 94, Greg Mark. I said it was a dangerous throw. Watches McManus releases the ball, and Greg will be right there. He would have been off to the races. Look at here. Right in his hands, comes right out of his hands. Floyd catches it, but it was a very dangerous throw. And Testaverde returning to the game. But that right foot injured in step becoming a problem for them. They run on first down into the heart of the Seminole defense. And John Eford and Odell Haggins, 52 and 53 backup linebackers, make the stop. And that is Sammy Smith, who was injured on the first series of the game. Second and seven at the They have put the pads back on. He's obviously going to play with a little pain. You could tell by the wince. This is second and seven for the Canes. And Williams will go nowhere. Steve Gabard, 76. He was the first man in. Era, the defense is playing better for the Seminoles. Right. Also, it's an indication that they don't want Testaverde throwing all the time. They're probably trying to get the ball on the ground. And you can see the defense just swarm in on Williams, number 24. And I would think that it'll be interesting to see how well Testaverde scrambles because they have a passing down play here. Florida State substituting four and five men a play because of the intense heat here this afternoon. On third down, Testaverde over the middle, and he just threw the ball out of the grasp of Williams, who had released and was wide open. And Vinny knows he should have hit him. The defense was the double zone that I had talked about at the top of the show. Man-to-man -man coverage underneath with two deep, and he breaks away from his receiver. This is one of the few that you'll see Vinny overthrow, but he was he got a lot of pressure right there from Nichols, number 79. Fegels will punt it. McGee snaps it to him. Ooh. And he puts one high, and Sanders signals for the fair catch at the 21-yard line minutes to go here in the first half there's a flag down it was a 40-yard punt I have mentioned the snapper Pagis for Florida State a couple of times that's because the regular snapper Brian Smith is injured so Pagis who normally snaps on extra points and field goals has been pressed into duty here this afternoon and they were very concerned. Smith broke a hand in practice two days ago. <laughs> Pagese was out early, about an hour before game time, practicing his snaps with one of the assistant coaches. Looked like Jeff Eagles was putting showtime on that tonight. He made a, a pretty good attempt to indicate that he had been rough, but he wasn't touched. Well, they're going to bring it back, and Pagese will snap it all over again. 
Now, Arab Pagese is what they refer to as a true freshman, unlike a red-shirted variety. So this can be huge pressure on a center. And if the defense is aware that the regular has suffered a broken hand, they will line up a couple of men on his nose and make sure that he feels it, hoping that they get a bad snap late in this game. There's the bad snap. Block punt by Florida State. The 10 yard line, it's touched first and then downed at the one yard line. And the bad snap comes in to haunt them as Alfonso Williams. I'm not sure he can advance it after he first touched the ball there. That's a penalty. He cannot advance the ball. He pushed the ball forward with his hand. It's going to come back. Not the punt, of course. They'll recover the fumble. The infraction was when he used his hand to push the ball forward. He should have picked it up and gone into the end zone. Well, I certainly did not mean to jinx the freshman snapper oh, by telling that story. But that is what has concerned Jimmy Johnson for the last 48 hours. And he said, I will do anything to avoid punting. There was very little he could do in that particular situation. He wasn't close enough to gamble on it. And Florida State blocked two punts last year against Miami. was Fiegel's fielding the ball that was already on the ground and I mean Williams just busted through on him and I'll tell you what this will remind pro fans of a fellow by the name of Dave Casper with the Oakland Raiders dribbling the ball into the end zone that's before they changed the rule in the NFL illegal in college football but Florida State will get it there just the far side of the 20 yard line first down for Danny McManus and the oh, yeah. Seminoles playing well. They sure are, but you forgot that uh, Dave Casper was from Notre Dame. Oh, I'm sorry, Earl. You taught him oh, yeah. how to do that, right? right? <laughs> 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 oh, he was a good tight end, too. One of the best I ever saw. You know, these two teams have exchanged kick blocks. Miami has done the job on other teams this year with seven. Florida State had three coming into this game. That's their fourth. And Jimmy Johnson right there, as you pointed out, Brent, was really concerned about the center. They had lost their starting snapper, and that is a very, very important position. Now, there's a young man coming off an injury, Mike Pigza, who had a colon operated on earlier this season. He was in pads for the first time the other day, but it would have to be a severe emergency to press him into duty because by now, Florida State realizes Miami has a problem and they will start to apply pressure on that center the rest of the way. On first down, they run the fullback right straight ahead. Jerome Brown, 98, getting a lick in. And we have seen a lot of Dane Williams here this afternoon, number 49. He continues to play fullback instead of Tanner Holloman for the Seminoles. On that no gain, this is second and nine, and you would think that McManus might be putting it up here. I'm sure that he will. Whether he run, does it off a run action or off the pocket, they run the, like to run the pocket pass from this formation. Quick screen. And the fullback can't hold on. Williams dropped the swing that time. Well, that thing was set up to beautifully executed. Everything, of course, with the catching of the football. I know that Bobby over there was licking his chops when he saw the line set up out there in front. That was going to be a big play. From the Big Ten, the fighting Illini with a field goal. Nothing would surprise you after what happened last week. Nebraska losing to Colorado, and we'll get the insight on how that game is going on the Prudential College Football Report at halftime. Here is the third down for the Seminoles. And Floyd brought down around the 19 by Danny Stubbs, number 96. Well, they tried to catch him in a blitz with a little draw. It was a good call, but Miami was up to it this time. They reacted to the draw play. Stubbs coming in, Myra, number 45, cleaning up. So Schmidt will attempt a field goal. He represents the difference right now in a 17-14 lead by Florida State over the number one ranked team in the country, the Hurricanes of Miami. This is a 35-yarder by Schmidt. It's a fake. McManus. He's running, and he's short of the first down. He did not get there. Tolbert Bain, 18, up to stop him.
Florida State closed its practice session for the first time this season all week long in Tallahassee. Now we know why. Every 15 minutes, Bobby Bowden rehearsed another gadget play. But this one comes up a yard short. And the Hurricanes get it back at the 11-yard line as Tolbert Bain makes the tackle that prevents Florida State from recording a first down with McManus, the holder, on the roll. And he may have been injured on the play. That can be a terribly costly play now for Florida State as the quarterback not only was stopped short, but he was hurt on the play. Testaverde goes back to work. Time going for Urban. Beautiful interception by Sanders. Sanders. Coming back. Hayes inside the 20 yard line. What a catch he made. No wonder Bobby was thinking about switching him over to receiver earlier this year. Irwin had him beat. Absolutely had him beat. I could see it from up here. Sanders made a tremendous recovery. Came over the shoulder you'll see a pump fake right there and he beat him now testaverde will put it up and it looked like he had it watch sanders come over the top make the interception what a great defensive play here's the view from the ground level look at him go up and pick that ball off that is a sensational play era i think florida state will have to use a timeout They've got a problem with Danny McManus, and they've just told Peter Tom Willis, number four, to get a hat on. So McManus was injured on the fake field goal. We'll take a break. We'll get it all sorted out, and we'll be right back. The backup quarterback, Peter Tom Willis, on the field for Florida State. The 6'3 freshman out of Morris, Alabama. His numbers on the season look like that. Now here is the fake field goal. Watch McManus come up running off the play. No question it was a design fake even though the snap was a touch low because Schmidt followed on through with the kick. He then turned the corner and when he was tackled short of the first down there was an injury suffered. We have John Dockery over there and we'll find out what the problem is with McManus here shortly. Willis's first snap. Floyd powering down to the 17-yard line. Gary Mahan. Let's go to John Dockery now, John. Brent, I don't know if you can see it or not, but behind me, that's Danny McManus going into the locker room. He hurt his right thumb. The thumb was actually quivering when he came off the field after the fake field goal. They're taking him in. They don't know whether he'll return at all today. Now back to you. So two players lost here in the first half. McManus, the starting quarterback, and Smith, the starting tailback. Smith getting suited up a short time ago. Figures to be returning. Right now it is Floyd and Williams carrying the load behind Willis. There was movement. Fumble. Miami jumps on the ball. But there's a penalty marker down. There was movement and Florida State could have been offside. If the whistle did not sound, Miami's Randy Shannon will be credited with a recovered fumble. Let's see. See the problems you have when you lose your starting quarterback. Let's see what it looks like. The, the center was late. The offensive line was firing it out. It appears to me that it isn't Willis's fault as much as it is the center Hensley. Hensley. The play had been blown. The down. offense at the dead ball situation, the five-yard penalty, and then second down. And the ball, with the whistle had blown. Era, when you come in like this in an injury situation, can you rehearse a couple of snaps back in the huddle? Is that legal in football? Yes, he could have rehearsed. He could have asked for the time. No problem. Second and 15. Willis pulls out. He's under pressure. He won't get it off. He's sacked at the 30 by Dan Stubbs. That's the very thing that Bobby Bowden said. McManus has a sense about him. He can't, you don't sack him. And you see Willis come in here, the first pass attempt, boom, he's sacked by Stubbs, number 13 for Stubbs. Oh, how Bobby Bowden would love to have that fake field goal call back again. Not only did the fake come up short of the first down, but he has lost his quarterback because of an injury. It is third and 23. Willis will put it up for the first time. No, he will not. They'll run Floyd into an alley on the right side. Did not 
get back to the original line of scrimmage, but that's close enough to allow Schmidt to attempt a field goal, and he will have a new holder. Yeah, that's the other thing that you lose. You lose your holder, you lose your quarterback. It's a very serious injury for him. Now, the punter has come out, Lewis Berry, and he will put it down. Frequently in practice, the putter winds up holding a lot. It's good. A 38-yard field goal by Schmidt. And Florida State leads Miami 20 to 14. We'll be right back in the Orange Bowl. Captain Richard Daniels from Burbank, California is up on our airship Enterprise, the Goodyear blimp, with that view of the Orange Bowl on a beautiful day here in South Florida. 85 degrees, been a little humid here the last week. But it has been glorious weather to get outside, and play a little golf, or watch a little football. And J.C. Penny goes in to field that kickoff by Schmidt. He'll down it for the touchback. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. Vinny Testaverde brings the hurricane offense out. Speaking of offense, we'll have some coming up. The Los Angeles Lakers and the Houston Rockets. Dick Stockton and Tommy Heinsohn will be down in Houston. Ralph Sampson not playing for the Rockets because of an injury. He'll miss four games at least. He goes on the four-game injured reserve list in the NBA. Rockets eliminated the Lakers. So you'll see a rematch of the Western Conference Final after this game. What a wild one we've had so far. Ball is at the 20-yard line. The number one ranked team in the country down by six. Testaverde hands off, and Bratton gets a first down to the 32-yard line. Well, Brent, the Hurricanes made a couple of mistakes with the interception, but they only gave a field goal. And, of course, here you see Bratton with a big hole going over the left side and picks up a first down. But a touchdown and an extra point puts him right back in front again. And they are explosive. On a first down, they'll run Bratton. Great block by Alonzo Highsmith. Freed him out to the 37. One of the reasons why the NFL rules about the prospect of Alonzo Heisman is his blocking ability when he sets up the tailback. And that time, number 30 was the lead blocker. Take a look at how they come out of a split back formation. Highsmith seeks that man right there. And he opened the way for Bratton. And they make it second and five. And they continue to run Bratton. They are close to a first down. Hayes, 78, bringing him down. And the pressure is on the shoulders of that young man, Willis. The freshman from Alabama, Testa Verde, had thrown 115 straight passes without an interception before Sanders made a spectacular catch to set up that field goal a short time ago. The play being delivered from the sideline. It is third and inches. Johnson content to go to power football right now. Broughton up over the top for the first down. It's to the 45-yard line. First and 10, 338. And what Johnson wants here is a ball control drive. No mistakes. Get down, get the one-point lead, and get to the locker room. Bratton really goes over the top to pick up the first down. Irvin is the wing back. So far it has been all number five in this drive. Here he comes again. Out to the 49-yard line. Mayhew with McGowan, 38. Smacking down right there. The clock continuing to run down toward the three-minute mark as Michigan moves ahead and Ohio State is tied up Iowa. You know, Heavy substituting by that Florida State defensive unit. Miami has not been able to run against the Hurricanes in the last three or four years. And they I think they're trying to establish a running game to set up their run action passes. Here he comes to the pocket this time. 
incomplete. Urban was covered. Then he wants uh, Greg, interference called. Greg Newell was the defender all over Michael Irvin that time. Then he thought there was interference. He delivered the ball, but he delivered it high and felt that he had been bumped. But the officials say no, no penalty. It's hard to remember all of the things that have happened so far in this game. <laughs> so much has gone on. We've had a 100-yard touchdown off a trick play on a kickoff return. A starting quarterback knocked out on a fake field goal. The Heisman Trophy favorite back to throw it again. And Brian Blades can't hold on. And the ball was thrown high. Well, how'd the Buckeyes get that touchdown? Let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Jim? Well, Brent, they got it via Chris Carter. You know, there may not be a better receiver in college football than Chris Carter of the Buckeyes. Watch him here. Take the pass from Carsados, then shake off the defender, Ken Sims, of the Hawkeyes. And there goes Carter, 72 yards for his seventh touchdown of the season. More scores and highlights coming up at the half, Brent. Oh, he's a tremendous football player, Jeb. His brother was an NBA player. Chris was a great high school player. So we've got a punt here by Hurricanes. Pagese delivered the snap that time. Eagles gets it off. Sanders, fair catching at the 16-yard line, 224. And you've got to be impressed with the Florida State defense. They held Miami at midfield. It's a 35-yard punt. And now Willis will attempt to get something going. Along with Eric Parsegan and John Dockery, I'm Brett Musburger. The Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida is the scene. The Hurricanes, who are number one after reeling off seven straight wins, trail Florida State by six, 20 to 14. But Danny McManus, the Seminoles quarterback, knocked out of the game because of an injured thumb taken away to the locker room with the freshman, Peter Tom Willis, bringing the Seminoles to the line of scrimmage. Running Floyd. It's been wild. We had four touchdowns scored in the first quarter. We'll run through them for you. Holloman, the fullback, put the Seminoles ahead 7-0. That's after Florida State took the opening kickoff. Miami came right back, and Williams angled off to the left flag and tied it at 7. Then Testaverde went 23 yards to Highsmith on a schoolyard play, and then Carter, 100 yards off the lateral on the kickoff return, tied it at 14. Two field goals later, and you are up to date. It's second and 12. Here is Floyd, and it is awfully hard to run when they do not respect the passing ability of the quarterback. Bobby Bowden is at a severe disadvantage because the Canes do not expect him to put it up right now. Very unlike and uncharacteristic of Bobby Bowden to run the ball, but obviously he is concerned about his quarterback. Let's see whether or not he puts it up with Willis here on this third down play. With this, with this lead, I'm sure that he doesn't want to take any unusual chances down in his own territory because he doesn't want to give a cheap score. He's got the lead. He would love to hold it going in at halftime. Psychologically, it would a big, be a big boost. Era, he has eight yards to go here for the first down. Puts up his first pass. Great grab on that far sideline. What a catch by Terry Anthony, a freshman from Daytona Beach. An 18-yard gain. That was some kind of catch. But an end zone shot. Watch him reach up. He just lays the ball over the defenders. Look at him come up with one hand there. Great job. Beautiful. And then he holds on to the ball. Here's the lick that he takes on that far sideline up in the air and Benny Blades was over there working on him now it's first down Willis with some confidence rolls and he hits the fullback coming out of the backfield and he gets a first down near midfield beautiful bootleg play with a fullback breaking into the flat he had him wide open and he delivered those two plays should give him a great deal of confidence Dane Williams was on the receiving end and with a minute 12 Willis has moved the ball for Bobby Bowden out to midfield I'll tell you who else will get restored confidence will be the coaching staff now they'll give him some plays with which to operate that's right and we get word that George Myra the middle linebacker of the Hurricanes has left because of an injured knee he's receiving treatment the center checks with Willis at the line 
First down. They run him to the right. Throw incomplete. Overthrew his tight end O'Malley. And Winston Moss, 99, drew coverage. I think he should have stayed in the pocket that time. He rolled outside, attempted to roll outside the contain. And the blocking was from the inside out rather than from the outside in. He's Second and ten with a minute seven to go. He'd been better served to stay closer into the pocket on that rollout. Here's Floyd, the tailback, inside the 45-yard line. Let's find out more on McManus, and here is John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brent. I was just in the locker room. They took preliminary x-rays. Does not show a break in his right thumb, but there's an awful lot of swelling. It's unlikely that he'll return in the second half. Now back to you. A tough break for the Seminoles. Danny McManus, who had the show on the road. So here's the freshman. It's Willis's game, and at third and three, he just puts it up in the air and blades his back. He could have made a fair catch on that ball. Down the sideline. Out of bounds near midfield. That reminded me of Randall Cunningham on that trick play that the Eagles used this year. Throw the ball up in the air and hope they can play a little volleyball. Nobody got down there to be anywhere near it. And you see the ball is just thrown up in the air. Well, they have given Testaverde a last at bat here in the first half with 21 seconds. A three deep coverage by the Seminoles. Here's the best defense against the pass. Testaverde on his back signaling timeout. Great play by Thomas Harp. Well, Florida State is located in Tallahassee. And let's take a look up close at that fine school. That's the fourth sack registered by Florida State against Vinny Testaverde. A year ago in Tallahassee, they sacked him seven times, but he got in the last lick. He threw two fourth-quarter touchdown passes to beat the Seminoles. A deep drop. Under heavy fire again. There was no receiver there. A penalty flag goes down by the referee in behind the play. You bet. That's a good call, Aaron. Yep. There was no receiver in the area. He would have been sacked. And I definitely think that that foot is bothering him, Brent. First of all, the play calling, which has been a lot of running plays. Here he is trying to get the ball up. He's getting pressured. He cannot scramble like he did earlier in the game. That foot is definitely hurting him. The last time Vinny Testaverde was this frustrated in a football game was the Sugar Bowl in New Year's Day by Tennessee. They came with one blitz after another, and because of the crowd noise, it was hard for Testaverde to call his audibles at the line of scrimmage. Now, a year ago against Colorado State, he came up with an off game following an off week. Now you put all those things together. An off week, an injured instep, and a defense that is starting to frustrate him, and you can understand why Florida State has a shot for the upset of the season. I say a shot because I have such great respect for the running game that Jimmy Johnson can bring in underneath Testaverde, too. Now, in his last five passes, four have been incomplete, and there's been one interception. And Earl Bruce continues to be able to score against Hayden Fry. He comes back with two touchdowns, and we'll get the full update on that game from Jim Nance on the Prudential College Football Report at halftime. Here we've got a timeout being called by Florida State at the five-second mark. Well, this has been quite a first half, and I'm sure that Bobby Bowden, who we see is back right there, is very pleased with what has taken place with the exception of the injuries and the loss of his quarterback. He's making some notes. 
so he can go in at halftime and alert his team to some of the things he's going to expect and want in the second half. Well, tomorrow at 1230 Eastern time on the NFL today, we'll take a look at violence in football and the giant dilemma. That's at 1230 Eastern time on CBS on the NFL today. Here we are taking a look at the last five seconds of this game. And you've got a good one coming your way tomorrow. Dallas against the Giants and Atlanta against New England. The Falcons now face the heart of a very tough schedule. Some of you will watch Philadelphia or Minnesota take on the Washington Redskins. That's the lineup tomorrow on the NFL on CBS. Here, Arrow, we have had about as much action as we've had in a college game all season long. I wasn't sure that we'd see one any better than the Oklahoma game, but so far this one has been a dandy. Two outstanding ball clubs. Three-man rush on the part of the Seminoles, and they run it. Time will run out. Well, if there was any point when Florida State started to believe in itself, it came after Miami moved ahead 14 to 7. Then came the kickoff to Ross. He hesitated momentarily, checked cross field, came out to the 10-yard line, threw it. And on the lateral, Carter picked it up. The blocking wall had formed. And he raced 100 yards for the touchdown and allowed Florida State to tie it. Two field goals later, they lead it. We'll be right back after this message and a word from your local station. Florida State to kick it off to start the second half. Derek Schmidt with the ball teed up, and J.C. Penny is deep for the number one ranked team of the nation. Penny looking for an alley. Bangs to the 24-yard line. And let's go downstairs to John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brent. A couple of notes here. Vinny Testaverde was the last one out of the locker room for the Hurricanes. First pass he threw in warm-ups, hit the ground, didn't have much time to warm up. But before that, I was in the locker room in Florida State, and there was some fire there. Bobby Bowden said, and I quote, one of us is going to leave this field in 30 minutes with tears in our eyes. It's not going to be us, guys. Go after him. Get excited. Forget about what happened to your quarterback. Let's find out what's going to happen right now. Brent? All right, John, thank you. First and 10 now for Testaverde, who hands off to Williams. And he is battered down at the 28 by Anthony Williams, number 73, the first defender to him. Era, this is the first team this year to score 20 points on this Hurricane team. Oklahoma had scored 16, and that was the most the Canes had given up in a single game this year. But here in the first half, the Seminoles come down to the Orange Bowl, a field where they dearly love to play, and they score 20 first-half points. Been very conservative since Benny's injury. I think it's going to be very important in the second half to see how he handles himself on this drop-back pass here. Screen. He sets the screen to Highsmith, but the ball was dropped on the far side. There's that fullback screen that they put in for this game. 66 firm fullback screen, I believe it's called by the coaching staff. Right, they were trying to screen out to the left. He baits them well. They come in on top of him, but the ball, the coverage was there. Or I imagine it's possible that they gave Testaverde a painkiller and that injured foot if it was bothering him a great deal, and that might have been one of the reasons why he was out late. We'd have to check that with the trainer. This is third and five, and they will hand off to Highsmith, coming around the corner and getting the first down. You can see how conservative their game plan has been since Benny's foot was injured. We won't know exactly how well he is until he goes back and he's forced to scramble to see whether or not he can do the things he could normally do when he was healthy. Picking up the signal from the sideline there. Era on the other side of the ball, if you were Bowden and his defensive assistants, would you send some blitzers out after him and try to get him on the move? I think I would change the game plan a little bit. I would blitz a little bit more than I had intended based on the fact that he is not as mobile. We're in the first two deep zone. Straight back and no pressure. All time. And he hits Williams. Another first down to the Seminole 45-yard line. That's a 17-yard gain. Well, the coverage was good up to a point, but you can't give any passer as much time as Vinny had that time. You can see that they are five across here, and the linebackers with a two deep. 
but this time they drop off with four deep. You see right there, there's four deep. The linebackers are trying to cover man on man. No one gets anywhere near Vinny, and he has all kinds of time. You just can't give him that much time. Warren Williams is the tailback. Testaverde calls the play at the line. Over the middle, and it is dropped. So the ball was bobbled into the heart of that coverage, and Greg Newell, number 40, the free safety, had the primary coverage on that play. And it'll be second down and 10 for Testaverde. Also, the receivers have dropped more balls that Vinny has thrown today than I have seen in a while. Normally, they're all sure-handed. That week off sometimes can dull the timing a little bit. And that has been the case with the Hurricane offense. They show blitz and drop back out of it. They run Williams around the right side, and he is cut off at the 45-yard line by Eric Hayes, 78. That young man has played himself a fine game here this afternoon for the Seminoles defensively. He did a great job. Hung right on the line there and then fought his way right down the line of scrimmage and made it with, for no gain. This will be third and ten. And will that veteran offensive line give Testaverde time to find a receiver? Irvin is in the slot. Williams moves up on the wing. Smith goes out. Five receivers out. Down the middle to Irvin. First down at the 21 yard line. A 24 yard gain. Testaverde to Irvin. They tried to blitz here with Sanders. Watch him try to come in here. Irvin just comes right down and breaks over the middle. You see him pick up Sanders, number two, the left cornerback. But Testaverde puts it right there. If he hadn't fallen, he'd have gotten much more yardage. Ground level view of it. There's the throw. Boy, he didn't have much time. Highsmith running on first down. Inside the 20-yard line, Paul McGowan, 38, meets him at the 17 and brings him down. Era Jimmy Johnson's offensive coordinator, Gary Stevens, changed some of the sets that they are using here early in the third quarter. They've used three wide outs to the wide side of the field. And also, Brent, the thing that's very noticeable, it's unlike Miami, is that they're running the ball on first down an awful lot. There it is again, trips to the wide side of the field. High Smith stepped over a tackler quickly to the 15 14 yard line short of the first down but it'll leave a third in short Eric Williams 17 came up defensively boy that was great running by Alonzo Highsmith it looked like he's going to be stopped there for no game maybe even a loss he's a great football player that he's was all on his own 10 times for those 48 yards here this afternoon big down being charged to Florida State. Something they didn't like in the offensive set. We'll be right back. Derek Dodge 28 in there. We're back at 10:51 in the third quarter. 20 to 14, Florida State with a lead on Miami. Derek Dodge, the nickel man for the Seminoles, checking in and out of the lineup and apparently that resulted in some defensive confusion and Florida State used a timeout, leaving them with two. It'd be a very costly one also as this game comes to a conclusion. Testaverde, there's blindside pressure, gets it off, and it's caught on the near sideline by Brett Perriman. So he'll move the sticks on that first down catch by Perriman. What a throw that was, Brent. He's moving away from the line of scrimmage. Look at this. No great way catch. that you can knock that down. A great catch and throw it low and away from the defenders. And that's exactly what he does there. And he's moving better than I thought he could. That's a very good example that he did come out 
and move away from the pocket and away from the rush. First and goal at the Seminole 8. Bootleg to the left. Injury or not, Vinny Testaverde ties the game. mistake that is by the Seminoles this is a great job of running I didn't I don't know how he popped through he shakes one tackle there's another bounces off of that comes up the sideline we'll also see where the mistake was made here there's a third one by blades misses that's Benny and he's finally brought down I can't see where the last it was after uh, that era that the, the blow was delivered White is hurt for the Seminoles. Let's go back. I mentioned that Brett Perriman threw a block. Era maybe it was too good a block. Quarterback Testaverde is going to fake the sweep. Now Perriman comes down here and throws a block, but it looks like he might have been pulled down. Let's take a look and see. He makes a good fake on the sweep. Fakes the entire Florida State Seminole right defensive side. Now watch Perriman right there. <laughs> down goes a defender. I don't know. It looks like a two-point takedown to me. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, folks. It worked. Now, the personal foul penalty against the Seminoles brings the ball back to the 27-yard line. A very costly 15 yards. And because it was a dead ball foul, it is first and 25. fake Willis throws complete on first down he goes to the fullback coming out of the backfield Tanner Holloman Rod Carter the outside linebacker 91 had him one-on-one -on -one as he released but this will leave them second and 22 hardly worth the risk to throw the ball for three or four yards the coverage was there you want to throw the ball upfield you got big yardage Lineman comes through and buries the fullback on that play. Silio 
Hill does a great job. 93, right there, comes down to the inside. The trapper is knocked off and just pulverizes Holloman. Third and 22. Miami goes to five defensive backs. Willis swings it outside to Holloman, and he slips down at the 34. Florida State is forced to punt. It was well executed. They faked the draw and held all the defense. And then they quick screen the ball. Watch him put it in there like the draw play. They fake it well. Then dump the ball off to Hollerman out here. But he slips and falls down. He could have picked up some yardage, but he would not have gotten the first down. David Kentai goes deep on this punt by Berry. And they came after him, and he boomed a beauty. He's a fine punter. And Kentai down at the 16-yard line. Boy, John Parks did a number on him. A 50-yard punt, and Parks slams him down right there. Picture book stuff right here. Bang. Oh, tough way. Mm. Move it right back. the defensive unit of Florida State, and they must answer the challenge on this series. Miami leading by a point, and they run Heisman on first down. Paul McGowan, 38, stepping up in there defensively along with several of his teammates. So if they can hold right here and force Miami to punt or get a turnover, then spirits would rise. But if Testaverde and the Canes go the long way this time, this game could break wide open. That's the 13th time that they have run on first down, Brent. It changes their game plan. Testaverde will throw on second and eight. There's a penalty flag down, almost intercepted. But there is a marker down. Felton Hayes, 46, outside linebacker, dropped back in his zone. This is not a sharp performance by the Canes here this afternoon. They were favored by two touchdowns. Right now, they are battling for their lives. After having won their first seven games, they are ranked number one in the land. Well, that could have been a big turnover there. I'm not so sure I would have taken that five-yard penalty, Brent. I think I would have taken that down. I think the down was more important. Look at here. They're trying to switch defenses. They're going to have people on and off the field. And Williams goes nowhere, but that space mask. Eric Hayes reached in and grabbed mask instead of jersey and a costly penalty against Florida State. There's a ground level view of it. Oh, there's the mask. Oh, gosh. That's let's a bad see, one. Let's see whether or not he gives him the big penalty or the five. It's the big one. And a first down for Miami near the 30-yard line. They're doing a lot of substituting. The Seminoles are defensively trying to get the right personnel in. Bobby Bowden upset with the officials. Wants an explanation. Now he's got it. He'll go back to the headset on that far side. On first down, Highsmith out to the 32-yard line. And Fred Jones, 55, who has been relatively quiet here this afternoon, stepped in there and hit him. Seminoles are setting a pattern. First down, run. First down, run. You mean the uh, the Canes? I'm sorry, the Canes are. But uh, the Seminoles have done a good job in in stopping the run. Brian Blades and Irvin go to Testaverde's left. Highsmith flares out. Blades incomplete. Great defensive play by Eric Williams, number 17. Eric 
Williams did a nice job, number 17. His timing was beautiful, his response to the ball while it was in the air. Watch here as he steps right inside, bats that ball away, and that ball was right on, on the money again, the blades. But Eric Williams, good defensive play, right cornerback. Now there is the injured thumb that has put the Seminoles at an extreme disadvantage. Quarterback Danny McManus on a fake field goal had a helmet press up against it. Not fractured, but he's out for this game. Severely swollen. And on third down, Testaverde intended for his tight end. And there is a penalty marker down. And that was Martin Mayhew, who will be called for pass interference, number 32. Again, it was man-to-man -man coverage with two deep. Looked like pretty good coverage overall, but the flag was thrown right at the last second. Bowden again, furious. He threw the headset. Now the hat goes down. Let's see if we can see it. You'll see man-to-man -man coverage underneath at the last second. It's all right here. Let's see. I don't know where he called. He called that interference. I think that's a thin call. I don't think it's interference. Couldn't see it certainly from that vantage point. The chain is not yet completely moved. Now an offensive tackle jumps offside. That was Scott Proben who moved. And it's getting a touch sloppy here in the Orange Bowl. Era, take us back to that interference call. All right, let's see if we roll it here. We'll roll it forward here and get right to the point where we can show. Here's the contact right there. But that's all right as long as he stays in front and the ball's not in the air. Now, let's see. He's in front of him. Now, I can't tell whether or not there was any contact. Uh, there's the flag there. Era, there might have been a hand in the back. From up here when I saw it live, I thought there might have been pushing there at the last moment. Testaverde back on first down, swings to Highsmith. Highsmith cannot cut away from four defenders who cut him off. Alfonso Williams, 26, a strong safety, coming up to press. Well, the defense has played well. They've had some bad breaks in there. They had that face mask call. They've had that in pass interference. And now they have forced him into a second down and 15 or 16 yards. Bowden hoping that the defense can hold on. He's been upset with the officiating here in the second half. Irvin slotted to the right. Testaverde rolling in that direction. Highsmith underneath. Incomplete. He threw the ball too far in front of him. And he continues to be frustrated with this afternoon. That time, Jones, number 55, was beaten. They were in the two-deep zone with the five men underneath playing man. Jones, 55, was beaten. Vinny missed him, and he was mad at himself for having missed him because he had him wide open. And we remember that Miami has a snap problem here this afternoon in punting situations. This is third and 18. This is a big play as Testaverde, after throwing the incompletion, says, I had him wide open. Why well, couldn't I deliver? It was only 11 of 22 today for 130 yards, one touchdown and an interception. Under pressure, stepped up away from it. Open man was Perriman, and dropping back again was Eric Williams, 17. Brent, I think with a quarterback problem that the Seminoles have, I believe Bobby Bowden's going to try to go after this because he knows that he's limited in what he can do offensively with McManus out of there. Let's see if they go after this one and really try to get it. They did get one earlier, and if there's any kind of a snap that hits that ground, they can get to it. They've got 10 of them up there. McGee's the center. A low snap. Beagles comes up and does get it off quickly. Good job by the punter in that situation. Sanders returning. Slips free. Great return to the 45. What a good-looking athlete he is. The Seminoles will come out right there. A 34-yard punt and a 21-yard return. There is a hurricane player down at the 35-yard line, slowly getting up. He's going to be okay. 
Boy, that Deion Sanders is something, isn't he? Oh, what a good-looking athlete. Oh. That's Bernard Clark, number 57. He's the backup middle linebacker on those special teams. He'll come off the field. And, of course, still ahead of us here this afternoon, we've got the season premiere of the NBA on CBS. Sarah? Look at these moves by Deion Sanders. Bobby Bowden said he is. He can play any position for him. And he's been sensational as a punt returner this afternoon as well as a cornerback. Well, I mentioned the NBA, and that'll be the Los Angeles Lakers and the Houston Rockets when we finish here. That's next. First and ten for Willis and the Seminoles. Jerome Brown was in, incomplete. The All-American defensive lineman broke through his block that time and pressured the freshman quarterback, Peter Tom Willis. And it's going to be hard going for Bowden's offense. Well, Brent, I think they were trying to hit a quick screen out to the left. The linemen were sliding over, but the timing was off, the coverage was there, and they just didn't have a chance to do anything. Boyd is the tailback. Second and ten. Holloman. Great tackle by Rod Carter, number 91. Well, that's looking more like the Hurricane defense that only gave up 256 yards and only 99 a game rushing. They're starting to settle in. Granted, it's awful tough without your top quarterback, but this defense only gives 11.9 points per game. They've already given 20, but they're starting to really tighten up. They are only 3 of 10 on third down against this defense, and this is third and 12. Incomplete. Batted away by George Myra Jr., number 45, and now Bowden wants interference called the other way. He said, I want consistency. Why does it go that way and not our way? What's the difference? You tell me now. You saw that. Was there pushing behind? Come on. You drop it on them. Let's get it for me. Just give me the same call you gave him, all right? That was verbatim, Brent. Absolutely <laughs> verbatim. Here it is. Let's see whether Myra makes a great play or whether or not there is interference. Well, it's close. He made contact just as a very right there. Gets it off under pressure. The Canes were coming at that point. It's down to the 25, and Florida State saying that Miami touched it, but the officials say no. No, they didn't. They let the ball bounce free. It'll be Miami's ball when you come back. 437 in the third. 31 yard punt is down at the Miami 20. Jerome Brown is fierce when he turns it loose and watch the below he delivers there to the freshman quarterback. It was up a touch high, however. You might have called roughing the passer in that situation, too. It is first and 10 for Testaverde. 21-20, he leads Florida State. Bratton is in the game. They fake to him. He gets it off, intercepted. Number 16, Sanders picks one off for the Seminoles. He is smacked down from behind right there. Boy, what a tackle by Blades. Now some words are exchanged. That was Brian Blades, who came back on Tracy Sanders and slammed him down. But there's the turnover that Bowden needs. Again, it was not a good throw by Vinny. I don't know who he was throwing it to. He waits and waits and finally, just before he gets hit, I don't know whether he was... He apparently did not see that's Alfredo Roberts, number 87, with his back to him. And, of course, the, the ball was thrown poorly. Apparently did not see the defender. The only thing, conclusion I can come to because he's too good a passer to throw it to Tracy Sanders. Now Willis with first down and his offensive line jumps across the line of scrimmage. And they'll be penalized, and they continue to make damaging mistakes. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brent. Remember before the game, they were concerned about Jerome Brown being in condition. He hasn't played much in the last month. Well, I asked him before, he said his condition's fine, but that he has now had...
has two turf toes, but he was okay. Also, Coach Davis, the defensive line coach, tell him to freelance. Take either side of the center, do your thing, and go after the quarterback, and it seems to be working. Interesting to watch him on this series, number 98. Now back to you, Brent. All right. We'll be taking a look at him. They pitch to Floyd. Floyd is tripped up by number 99. That's Winston Moss. Moss, strong side linebacker. Big guy. 6'3", 236. Number three tackler on the Hurricane team with 63 involvements. Now you see Benny knows that he made a bad throw. But he's the same guy that took him down for the touchdown that put him in the lead 21-20. Second and 16. Seminoles break the huddle. Rolling to the left. Throwing in underneath to Carter, the tight end. He's inside the 35, but they have to get to the 26 for a first down. So this will be a third down play coming up. This is a good sprint out here. There's a double team on Jerome. They got him that time. Cumberland got him. And there's a good throw right there. Excellent throw. Now we get an isolated look right here as these two men will take Jerome Brown on right there. Cumberland right there, 300 pounds. He's doing the job on him there. Here comes third and seven. Dexter Carter, number 13, checks in as an extra wide receiver. Quick screen. And they get it outside to Holloman, the fullback. First down. Great lunge there to the 25-yard line. And that gives the Seminoles a first down on that third down situation. This is well executed here. It's a quick fake the draw. Come back to the outside. Watch here. Fakes a little draw play in there. Now he gets the quick screen. I thought Myron, number 45, might get to him here. But he gets to the corner and gets the first down before Myra can stop him. And they've got a first down at the 25-yard line. And again, a play we have not seen is any kind of an end around or a reverse. They fake it on first down. Willis goes for the touchdown. Incomplete. Have his hands on that ball and look it's on the far corner it looked like he was going to make a sensational catch Benny Blades 36 took Gaynor into the corner of the end zone they just went right up the sideline here and you'll watch Baines come I'm sorry uh, Benny Blades who can run a 4.35 40 recover now let's see he goes up had his hands on the ball but Blades did a nice job of defense Here's another shot right there going up. He's got, Gaynor's got his hands up there on the ball. And there is the job by Blades knocking it away. Great work. Carter lines up at tailback. They pitch it to him. No running room. Number 94 leads the assault, Greg Mark. Great play by Mark. Also took him back far enough that it might be a... It'll be a 50-yard field goal if they don't make anything on this next play. See here, just a pitch sweep, but there's no chance with the penetration that comes here. There's Mark number 94 right up in his face there. No chance. And also uh, a loss that could make the difference in the field goal opportunity that could give him the lead. About a 46-yarder, I think, Brent. See where he marks it down. Schmidt has kicked two already here this afternoon for the Seminoles. They trail it by a point. or inside of the one-minute mark. It'll be Barry putting it down. He's an excellent kicker. It's good. 
disappointed. He popped that ball. A 45-yard field goal by Derek Schmidt moves Bobby Bowden Seminoles back into the lead here, 23 to 21. Brent, he could have had another 15, 20 yards that time he would have made it. I'll tell you something else that impressed me about him. The holder did not get it down perfectly, and Schmidt held off and waited for his placement and then whacked it through the uprights. One other very important thing, within 43 seconds, the Hurricanes will get the wind, and it has picked up considerably since the beginning of this football game. Let's present this week's Toyota Leadership Awards to those players who've been singled out by the coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. And today's winners are David Palmer from Florida State. David is a junior pre-med major. He has a 3.4 grade point average. And Bill Hawkins from Miami. He's a junior finance major with a 3.2 grade point average from nearby Hollywood, Florida. And Toyota will donate a check in the amount of $1,000 to each of the school's general scholarship funds. And congratulations to both of those student athletes here this afternoon. The ball is on the tee for Schmidt. Florida State leading number one. He whacks it in the direction of J.C. Penny. He'll come out. Trying to swing outside, and he is down at the 14-yard line. Martin Mayhew, 32, just would not yield on that special team. He stayed in his alley, cut him off, and would not let him get to the outside. So later, after this action, we'll take you out to Houston. Dick Stockton and Tommy Heinsohn will be there for the Lakers and the Rockets. Boy, what a great Western Conference final they waged last year. And in tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern time, we'll have the NFL today coming your way. Is there too much violence in NFL football? We'll take a look at that. The Giants' dilemma tomorrow is one word. Make it two words. Dallas Cowboys. First and ten. A handoff to Bratton. Bratton powers out beyond the 20-yard line. Felton Hayes tripped him up, number 46. So it'll be second down for Testaverde, who has been struggling, and Bobby Bowden doing it with Mears and a freshman quarterback here this afternoon. Well, Benny will be picking up the wind in this fourth period. It will be very important, but they do not have very good field position at this stage. They'll be content to bring it down here, and now they will have the wind at their backs. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. Sports presents college football, sponsored by Toyota, builder of tough, powerful, reliable trucks, Toyota. Apple Computer, makers of the Apple II, the educated choice in personal computing. And by the people who make glass containers naturally. Fifteen minutes to stay number one. Second and four for the Hurricanes. Plenty of time. With the wind at his back, he hits his tight end, number 87. That was Alfredo Roberts. A 24-yard gain in era. Just as you said going into commercial, the wind was going to be a factor in the final 15 minutes. There's no question about it. And Vinny has it now. He scrambled around there, had plenty of time. You give him that kind of time, he's going to complete passes. This same guy a year ago against this same team was sacked seven times, got off of his back, and took the Hurricanes to a win. Testaverde brings them to the line of scrimmage with this first down. Again, plenty of time but still not enough. Great coverage in the secondary. And finally, the nose man, Harp, came free to make the stop. But credit the defensive backs. They were all over his receivers that time. 
let's go downstairs now for a few more thoughts on this fourth quarter. Here's John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brent. My thought is this. If Vinny better put some points on the board because Winston Moss, the only starter left over from that national championship team, is out with a hamstring. He's going to try to go, but he was limping severely along the sideline. I doubt if he'll be able to go back at strong side linebacker. And, of course, he's a big play guy for the Hurricanes. Now back to you. That was the fifth sack registered against Testaverde by Florida State. Over the middle, complete to Highsmith. Short of the first down, Eric Williams, 17, tackles him. But he is very close. Well, you want to see how strong an arm Vinny Testaverde has. That time he was backing away, and it looked like he was off balance. Watch here as he just, oh, his arm doesn't step at all. Bang, oh. No movement of the feet, all arm, and right to Alonzo Highsmith. That was, that showed some real arm strength. Third and two. Ball is at the 47-yard line. A tight running formation with two tight ends and Williams for the first down. He followed the left side of that offensive line, Alekna and Maddox. And let's go to New York and Jim Nance. Jim. All right, Brent, at halftime, we told everyone that Columbia is in the unusual position of leading a football game. Here, Dan Bodich breaks away for the Lions and goes in for the score, and Columbia could be breaking their 30-game winless streak. Let's go back to Brenton Era. It is a first and 10. The ball is at the 42-yard line. Verdi with that straight back drop. Incomplete. He wanted Irvin. Well, Benny is mad at himself. He had him open. But he's really not stepping with his foot, Brent. He's just throwing all with his arm. And in case you did not join us, Benny Testaverde came into this game with an injured instep. He is wearing a special protective pad on the top of the right foot high top shoe the low cut shoe is there on the left foot and it has affected him he was shaken up in the first half timeout has been called and Florida State will be left with only one timeout and we'll be right back here in the Orange Bowl we have 12 and a half minutes to play. Miami trailing Florida State. And this is a second and 10 for Benny Testaverde and the Hurricanes. Ball is at the Seminole 42. For Blades, breaks free and he's out of bounds at the 20 yard line. That's a 22 yard gain. Testaverde to Blades. Beautiful throw and a perfect throw against the double zone. Up the sideline, you come up to the, you'll see him come right up the sideline here and beat the defender. There he is. Now watch, the ball is perfectly thrown before the deep secondary guy who has a half of the field can get there. The perfect route against that defense. If Blades could have stayed in bounds for about half a step, he would have zipped into the end zone. Calling an audible at the line. For Blades, touchdown Miami. Showing you why they're number one. right back and Testaverde hits blades on the far sideline for 22 yards comes back with the touchdown Brent soon is and this is what he was doing is calling an audible he called him in man the man gonna go for the two points here they lead 27 23 and now Testaverde walks away while 
time has been stopped down on the field and Miami uses a timeout. Let's at the, the opportunity level, to look at this. He saw that he had a man to man and you see the crossing defenders are the receivers and Blaze just goes down and breaks to the outside. If we have a top view of that you'll be able to see this is what Vinny picked up. He saw the man to man coverage automatically call the play and the tough route that they ran against it and Vinny put the ball right there. Here's a top shot of it right here. You'll see he catches a man to man. They go down and break out. And you'll see that they can't stay him one-on-one. -on -one. He goes down, breaks to the post, and breaks to the flag. And look at this pass thrown perfectly before the defender can get his hands on it. That was Eric Williams. Just didn't quite get there. During the timeout, they substituted tight ends. But Coach Jimmy Johnson and Testa Verde are conferring with the referee at the 20-yard line. Testaverde with that last touchdown pass has thrown 41 in his career here at Miami and that the school record breaking the one held by Bernie Kosar. Highsmith incomplete. He led him too much. Missed on the short ball. Miami leads Florida State 27 23 failing on the two point conversion attempt with 12 and a half minutes to go here in Miami. Well, it was a perfectly executed touchdown play. They came back for the two points. You see Vinny there shaking his head. I just threw a strike against man to man for the touchdown. A hard throw to the flag. Now I can't hit a little bit of a little out pattern here. You'll see here's that touchdown. You'll see he catches him in man to man here and you'll see Blades will go down and break to the outside. He'll break here and they can't cover him. Watch here. There's your man to man. Blades goes in, gets his defender. Williams turned around, but he can't quite get there before the ball's there. Perfect route against that man to man coverage. The kickoff return team of Florida State scored on one shocker earlier in the game following a Miami touchdown. I will see if they come up with something after this scoring play to Brian Blades. The ball being put down by Mark Seelig. Ross and Carter are deep for about in the first half in case you joined us late. Ross took one five yards deep, came out to the 10, threw the lateral cross field, and Carter took it 100 yards. That one goes out of bounds, and five yards will be marked off against the Hurricanes. Well, they'll reload on that one. Well, as I pointed out, Brent, that the, it's got, the Seminoles are going to have even an increasingly difficult chore in going into the wind because Testaverde had some problems going into the wind. But as soon as he found it behind him, he started to throw strikes. Um, Miami in the second half has registered 164 yards to Florida State's 16. All day long, the Goodyear blimp has hovered above the orange ball here. And, Given us some splendid shots of the Miami skyline, the ever expanding Miami skyline. And as soon as we finish here in Miami, we'll send you into Texas. Houston will be the scene. It'll be the Los Angeles Lakers and the Houston Rockets. The season premiere of the NBA on CBS this afternoon. 12 24 to go. It's 27 23. Miami with the lead over the Seminoles of Florida State. Slips free of another tackle. Boy, he's a son of a gun to bring down, isn't he? Coach? Really is between Ross and Sanders. Dion, they've got two great return people. Now the problem for the Seminoles is at quarterback. They have been forced to go with the freshman Peter Tom Willis ever since Danny McManus broke or at least injured a thumb. The X-rays were negative. So we don't know how severe the sprain is, but he injured a thumb on a fake field goal, and he has not been able to play since. Willis brings it to the line of scrimmage. Good fake. 
Great completion coming out of the backfield that time. It was Victor Floyd hitting for the first down. He is 8 of 12, and that was a 19-yard gain, and that gives him 71 yards. Oh, they make a great fake to the inside, and of course he comes right from this spot, right there, and he has enough time. He almost gets sacked. There's the trap fake, and you see him go around. That's Floyd coming around. There he is right in the seam, and Willis throws a nice ball in there. That was a very fine pass. Eric, if Willis can pull the trigger, Bobby Bowden will give him the plays to work with. He's got some offensive mind. Deep drop underneath, batted away. Great play by Jerome Brown, the All-American defensive lineman. He had the time, and he had the receiver open. At that time, Brown just knocks the ball down. There he is. You'll see the receiver come from your right. He delivers the ball. Looks like he's going to be open right there. But look at Brown knock that ball down. And Darren Holloman thought he had a reception, and he wound up with empty. This is the play previously. After the ball is delivered to Floyd, he gets jumped on by one Danny Stubbs. It is hard going against this defense. line it'll be short of the first down Bubba McDowell 48 bringing him down Sammy Smith was injured on the opening series and he has not played since even though he didn't put his uniform back on now let's see what the Seminoles come up with they've got third down about four in the Orange Bowl and a punt by Lewis Berry will have the Hurricanes playing a little conservatively you would think leading 27 23 I say think because you can never be too sure to test the verdict he'll run Bratton Bratton gets out beyond the 10 yard line they must go to the 17 for a first down Paul McGowan tackling Bratton Bratton and Highsmith are in the backfield. Testaverde has backed away from his teammates to take the signal from the sideline on the play that offensive coordinator Gary Stevens has called upstairs. Got to be very careful down here. Hang on to the football. They don't want any turnovers. Here is Bratton, short of the first down. 15-yard line, so it will be a third and three with Kevin Grant, 47, stopping Jimmy Johnson's tailback. See whether or not the Seminoles deploy into a goal line type defense to shut them down. If Vinny finds that, he can pick a man on man, man to man coverage, and he may audible to it. Let's see what they're doing defensively. No, they're not going into a goal line look. Testaverde uses a timeout. Only one timeout left for the Hurricanes and one for the Seminoles. We'll be right back for the last 925 in a moment. Between Florida State and Miami, we have 925 to go, 27-23. Miami with the lead. This is a third and three. Testaverde bringing them to the line of scrimmage. One on the off corners. He'll 
throw. There it is. He's got Irvin. That's the first down. They you tried to hide their coverage that time, Brent, but they couldn't. They had to show that they were coming in to a goal line look with one-on-one -on -one coverage here, one-on-one -on -one coverage there. Testaverde picks it up, and, of course, the quick out does it. They'll just do it to you every time, and you can't cover one-on-one -on -one right there. There it is. Testaverde puts it right there to Irvin, and they got their first down. Irvin has caught five balls for 63 yards here this afternoon. Nine minutes on the clock, and now Testaverde with some breathing room. Now in the middle to Perriman. Perriman at midfield. From behind, inside the 45-yard line, Stan Shiver. Got a hand on him, or he might have gone the distance, but it was a 39-yard gain by Perriman, who injured a hand on the play. Watch him come in from the right side of your screen, and wa screen. watch that ball come in here. The velocity on that ball and right on the numbers of Perriman. And he comes up that right side, goes beyond Deion Sanders, number two, and finally is tripped up, but not until he's made a big game. Perriman right here as he breaks across. There's the ball. Look at that throw. That's a beautiful throw. Testaverde calls the audible on first down. They have lost Highsmith to an injury. Daryl Oliver has checked in at fullback. He hits Irvin inside the 35. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brennan. When the Florida State gets the ball back, that man, number five, Chips Ferguson, will be the quarterback. Bobby Bowden came over to him moments ago and said a few words in his ear because when Willis came off the field last time, he talked about him getting the ball to the receiver too late. Willis was just sitting with his head down along the bench. So we will have a change at quarterback for Florida State, it appears. Now back to you, Brent. This is second down and four for Testaverde. Again, calling the play, even using a hand signal in case someone cannot hear. Drops back. Irvin! It'll be down there at the seven-yard line. Testaverde to Irvin. 28 yards. They were in three deep zone that time, and he just picked them right between the two. This deep safety man, you'll see here, he'll come down and break right in. They'll walk into a three deep with these men involved in the coverage. And watch him split that zone. He'll just come right straight up the field, break to the inside, and look at the ball right there before the safety man can get over there. Perfect throw, great call, and great route. the hurricane slowly moving into command of this one six straight completions by testaverde a little inside handoff to williams who busts inside the five and paul mcgowan brings him down there it's been a very impressive drive by the hurricanes started back on their own seven yard line after bowden's punter barry buried them down there and that third and three was a key key play on it it would have been forced to a punting situation but benny hit him on an audible highsmith has checked back in on this second and goal williams runs behind him and he is short as he tried to twist free boy that highsmith can he open a hole he led the way through there bratton comes off the bench. This will be third and short. Bratton has the capability of diving up over the top. There is Williams trying to swing free and it was whistled dead. You have to watch for number five at third and short to come right over the top in this situation for Miami. There he goes. Thrown back at the goal line. The Seminoles were ready, and it will be fourth and goal. Jones and McGowan stood tall. The two linebackers come right in at the goal line, and they stood him up there. They would not yield, and it is fourth and goal. What a great job defensively. You'll see Bratton dive right there, but you can see everybody in there. Looked like 40 Greg Newell was the key guy. 
Bowden's defense gave up a touchdown to Jimmy Johnson's Testaverde on a bootleg in an earlier situation. This, though, is fourth and goal. Oliver checks in. Benny runs it. The second time that Benny Testaverde has taken the bootleg in. side then he put the ball on his hip and took it for six more great call and Cox hits the extra point number one and in control now 34 23 over a game but an undermanned Florida State team Watches Testaverde delivers the fake, the ball in the other hand, and he runs it in. Well, we saw this same play once before in this ball game, and Testaverde did the same thing. It was just a different, different formation. He fakes the hand to Bratton, and here he walks into the end zone. He knows he's got the corner. Are you looking at it at ground level from the defense? Great fake. They're all going one way, and Benny's going the other. Miami leading by 11. And 5.20 to go. And a third quarterback getting ready for the Seminoles. Chip Ferguson, who lost his starting job to Danny McManus several weeks ago, is due to come on. McManus suffered a hand injury on a fake field goal in the first half. Area, if there is any play in the whole season that Bobby Bowden would dearly love to have back, it's that fake field goal. Yes, when he tried to go for the fourth down in relatively long yards and started taking the three points, of course, there are a number of things that happened. I think he probably would like to have McMahon back. touchdown pass by the Wolfpack. Eric Kramer, their quarterback, pulls one out over South Carolina. And Auburn is still unbeaten, leading Florida and Nebraska on the comeback after last week's shocker. And SMU leading Texas A&M in the first quarter. And Ohio State doing it to Iowa again. Chip Ferguson will not get it off because Dan Stubbs put a saddle on him and rode him to the ground. Oh, and the front four knows that you're going to pass the football. They just turn themselves loose, and it's awful tough to keep them off. Moving quickly is Ferguson. Again, he's under pressure and will not get it off. Cilio, number 93, led the rush that time. I, I wouldn't want to be the quarterback in there right now. They're all turning loose. Cilio, 288 pounds. Jerome Brown, 285. Stubbs, 241. And Ferguson is wondering, Coach, can't we please run the draw play <laughs> right now? One time, right. Disappointed freshman Willis, who stepped in behind McManus, who left with that injury. Number one and stomping and storming right now. Diving for the ball, number 19, Daryl Fullington, but it's ruled incomplete.
three downs and out. Well, this has been quite a quarter for the Hurricanes. And a shaky second quarter. And also a moderate third quarter. Before they come back in this fourth period. Mark of the champion. And Barry gets one off the side of his foot. Gets a roll out near the 40-yard line. But he did not hit it well. A 34-yard punt. And the Canes will be coming back for a big one in a moment. Came up a little short, Era. It was tough going after he lost McManus. Yeah, I think he had a great game plan. You don't have a quarterback that can execute. On top of that, you're going against the number one team, and you can see the frustration that Bobby is expressing there. They'll run Bratton. Down close to the 35-yard line with Sanders, number two, who has played so well. Chip Ferguson Deion becomes Sanders. the third quarterback the used tackle. by the Seminoles this afternoon. Greg, uh, Brent and Chris getting up there limping a little bit, but Brent, I think that there's a good relationship that exists between these two teams. Obviously, many of them come from the state of Florida, and both staffs respect one another, and I think that's important. And they play hard when they come down here to play, but it's a cleanly fought game. On second down, Williams hit at the 30-yard line be close to a first down that's the hand that turned this game completely around Danny McManus was moving the offense seemed to have a great feel for the defensive pressure and on a fake field goal that thumb was jammed by a helmet and he has not been able to play those are impressive numbers that was back in the opening quarter. Williams outside for the first down. The clock down to 2.30. It's an 11-point lead by Miami. You know, Brent, if you're going to be a national champion, and certainly this is what the Hurricanes would like to have, you've got to get by a game like this, a game where maybe you're not playing your best in some of the quarters and you're going against a doggone good football team you got to get by a game like this every team that's been a national champion has had a game where they bailed it out in the third or fourth period and certainly Miami has done that here just a birdie to throw against the coverage and he hits his tight end who slid out Alfredo Roberts John Parks, 19, up with the coverage. And it will be second five. And talking to Jimmy Johnson, it's interesting that in this situation, if you show Testaverde a certain defense, it doesn't matter what the score is. He will throw the ball. And when he came up that time, he saw it, did what he'd been taught to do by Johnson, and that's why he put it up. He'll throw it again on second down for Perriman. Great grab by Perriman for the touchdown. stay that way. Benny Testaverde shakes off that foot injury and what a second half show he puts on. Just one on one again and it's awful tough to take Miami one on one. The ball's right there. Eric Williams just can't quite get to it. Now the numbers mount. The Hurricanes will win their eighth in a row. No doubt about it. And you also have won the championship of the state of Florida, man. Beat those Gators earlier this year, and now you're whacking the Seminoles. Here's Ross in the end zone. Boy, he can put that kick in the corner of the end zone about as well as any kicker we've seen. Hey, Gonna have to move him back, I guess. Yeah, 
Yeah, Fred, you made a great catch down there. A lot of folks were happy about that, and some weren't. 127 to go. I'll tell you, whatever they gave Testaverde at the half, I want some. <laughs> he comes back with that injury and goes 14 of 21 for 224 yards and two touchdowns. It's been quite a, an exhibition by Testaverde in the second half. We didn't know whether he was going to be able to go or not with that foot. But under pressure, he did it. There's a handoff by Ferguson to Floyd. He runs out to the 36-yard line. Then he blades. Brings him down after a 16-yard gain. Boy, he lit it up here. He threw off the back foot. Couldn't seem to put a lot of pressure on the injured right foot. Bootlegged a couple of touchdowns in here this afternoon. They just send the Heisman Trophy down here, can't they? Ferguson. Scramble. But in fairness to Florida State, we have got to say that this game might have gone right down to the wire if Danny McManus had not left with that hand injury. He was doing a splendid job against that defense. He was off to a great start. He has a great release, senses the people around him. He's never been sacked. Now, that doesn't say that he was not going to get sacked in this ball game with that front four when they turn loose on you when they get a lead. He's been hard pressed not to be sacked, and certainly it had a big bearing on this football game. Second down and one. that pass for DeMary. He is a young man out of the Miami area. And Bain was there on the coverage. Tolbert Bain delivered the most important blow of the game inadvertently when his helmet smacked into the throwing hand of McManus, who was running on that fake field goal. And era, as you pointed out at the time, he shouldn't have been running with the ball because he had the fullback open for a quick pop pass coming out of there. And let him turn loose for it. That's next, the Lakers and the Rockets. Rematch of the Western Conference Final, overthrown and incomplete. And the final seconds will tick away here, and you'll get a look at the two teams that are favored to wind up in the Western Conference Championship again, the Lakers and the Rockets. But the question about the Lakers is their age. Can Kareem Abdul-Jabbar hold up again? How about A.C. Green? How much playing time will he get? Meanwhile, the Rockets today will be without Ralph Sampson. He is out for four games because of an injury. And they will be testing a couple of new guards. As the time runs down in the Orange Bowl on uh, what has been a good one. A tough loss for Florida State. They came in here prepared to play their game of the year. And they were right on target and moving the ball, and then disaster struck when the quarterback went out with a hand injury. Testaverde struggling with that injury. Came back so strong here in the second half and showed you why he is the Heisman Trophy winner. And there is Papa Testaverde. My son was made for the Heisman Trophy. No doubt about it. This is the biggest win by Miami over Florida State since 1976 when they beat them 47 to nothing. He'll get a trophy and he'll wind up the first player picked in the NFL draft. And he did it with some pain here this afternoon. He showed you a lot of courage here today. You think Papa likes that son? Oh, you can be proud of him. What a wonderful sight. You bet. Let's go down to John Dockery, John. Thank you, Brenna. Happy birdie, Ben. We've been in what a game. Just performance. What about the foot? Oh, it feels fine. Uh, it's throbbing a little bit, but, uh, you know, we won the game, and that's the big thing. You know, Brent and Arrow, we were talking about those boots. Although, were they improvised? No, they're, they're uh, the play is called to give the ball, but if the, the end comes down real hard, I just keep it and take it outside. Congratulations. They scared you a little bit, but you held on number one. Yeah, we did. That's what number, number one teams do. We're number one, too. Congratulations. Now back to you, Brent. That's the first time that Papa has let him talk that much. <laughs> Remember the Oklahoma game? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll be 
right back after these messages from your local station. The Chevrolet most valuable players of this game for Miami with a Heisman Trophy performance in the second half, Vinny Testaverde. He was 0 of 5 in the second quarter, but for the game 21 to 35, he throws for three touchdowns and he ran in two more. What an afternoon. And for Florida State, their fine cornerback, Deion Sanders. He played a spectacular game. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund. So coming up, it's going to be the Los Angeles Lakers against the Houston Rockets. The season premiere of the NBA is Do Your Way next here on CBS. And thanks to our crew, Joe Assetti, the director, and Rick Lasavita, the producer, for their fine coverage down here in the Orange Bowl on this warm warm afternoon where the Hurricanes face a battle but they end up number one again and they did it because of this man number 14 Vinny Testaverde so long everybody